Well, we got the problem. Okay, I live 35 miles uh, west or east of Toledo, Ohio. You read anything about Toledo, Ohio in the last couple of weeks? There's, yeah, yeah. yeah, they blew them, the algae blew them. That's right. They had chaos there. 35 miles away in Fremont, Ohio, they shut down the, the water usage in Toledo at like 2 a.m. on Saturday morning. When I was in Lowe's at 7 o'clock on Saturday morning, there was no water left. It was total chaos. I have a daughter that works in the medical profession from ProMedica in surgery. They were shut down for three days because of the mycocysteine that's in the water being toxic to the human species. Now farmers think they're above reproach, that they aren't going to be called on the rug for losing these nutrients. ProMedica lost a pile of money in three days in the first week of August, gentlemen. Because why? Because agriculture is the major contributor to phosphorus to Lake Erie. Just that simple. We're saying you get that soil opened up and get it working for you. The amount of fertility you need to be successful, you can, you can drop. We'd like to see you use our product, but I'm going to tell you right now, we've got guys in Ohio that came to our meetings in 1955 that have never used the first ounce of our product, but they still put on high calcium line. Why? Because they can cut back on everything else. They've got better control of that chemical loss than the guys that are totally ignoring this soil quality. And so we think it's paramount to you. You've got to figure this out. If you want to bring in the next generation. Now, if you're my age, you're ready to retire, and you could care less, that's fine. If you got young men that want to farm with you, you got to get this thing figured out. In my opinion. Calcium's the key. You jerking the chain yet? I can. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about calcium? Anything we talked about that seems crazy? Um, Talk to guys that use it here in New York. I'm from Ohio. I don't know anything about New York soils. I'm not so sure I know anything about the soil on my farm. Yeah, but how much of all of this planting has been done out west in South? They're doing it every so many feet in all the fields out there. That's probably pulling an awful lot of fertilizer off quicker than normally the soil right. would be retaining and stuff. Yeah. Well, see, part of the tiling problem, in my opinion, Bobby, is right here. You know. When you see tile lines going up and down hills, I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. they got this compaction or, or density layer, natric horizon, agrosoil, whatever you want to call it. But you can't get that water to progress down into that profile. When I go to the Red River Valley next week, and they've been slapping in tile like it's going out of style. Why? Because corn's a buck. But we have some guys that have gone out there on soils with pHs of 8.2, 8.4, have put on high calcium lime, and have opened that soil up so that it can drain, and the need for the tile has gone down. Now, we're not saying tile's not needed. You've got perched water tables that you've got to get that water out of there. But there are some places where this is the problem, not the need for tile. We've actually talked to tilers that have gone into wet spots, and what did they find in the bottom of the wet spot? Old tile. Yeah, the guy says, well, it's plug. There's a little bit of soil on the bottom of it. It's a six-incher, and there's only that much soil in it. The water can't get in it because it can't get into the profile because it's not porous enough. And see, that's where the calcium, the biological life. <laughs> see, biological life increases porosity also. What is more important, biological life or calcium? We think it's like the chicken and the egg. What comes first? You've got to get the calcium in there for the microbes to eat it, to <laughs> proliferate. Once you have that started... Now the ball starts going in the right direction for you. I think it gets like out here in a field that would hold water forever and just I'll stop the lime truck and empty the whole damn lime truck into it and rip it. And that'll be the first place of dry in a green spot for the next five years. <clears throat> That's a good point, Bobby. When when you spread limestone or high calcium lime or even gypsum, gentlemen, we think you've got to incorporate it into the soil. Now, some, some people are no-tilling and don't want to till the soil. We have spread high calcium lime on no-till and get it to work, but it takes time. Yeah. We've actually had guys, I had a guy down in South uh, 
South North Carolina, right on the North South Carolina border. He put it on and no till three years in a row and nothing happened. And he said, we didn't know what we were talking about. Our guy said, I think you got to do something with it. So we disc it and chiseled it. He said, just like you turned on the light bulb. You got to get that limestone, especially if it's carbonate, you've got to get it mixed into that soil to get reactivity because it's a very insoluble product. You gotta get oxygen down into it, get a cycle. Cycle. That's right, and see, you don't do this overnight. This takes time. If you're over here to get over there, it takes some time. You've gotta get that stuff mixed in there, get the reaction with the calcium so that the microbes start to proliferate for you, and then you start pulling it over in this direction. It's just not like fertilizer, which is very, very water soluble. That's why you can never overline with high calcium lime. Now, in our environment today, gentlemen, we can't. You know, eight dollar corn, maybe we could. Three fifty corn, can't do it. So that's why you've got to figure out what level you need. That's why you need to go in and run the biological experiment. That's what that strip test is—is is a biological experiment for you to actually figure out where you need to go. Why? Because it tells you right back here what you can afford. You know, the one gentleman said, geez, it's 30 a ton. How can I put on three ton? Well, that's why you've got to tinker with it to see what their final reaction is. Ask Steve. Comment. Um, this ground you're sitting on right here, last fall, I put it, the farm average is 7.1 pH. And I spread four ton on this field here and, and planted the wheat. And after running through the wheat, I... I feel that was a mistake that I didn't use eight um, because the vein that had eight ton on it over the next field over um, the wheat was running 83 bushels and over here was about 68 or 70 bushels but I did get um, 80 big square bales of straw off of this uh, 14 acres. Right. See and that's that's his experience, see, and that's what you have to go back on your farm and figure out, in my opinion, if you want to solve this issue. And my cost over there, uh, um, where I spread the eight ton, I spread it diagonally across the field, so every time I hit that vein with the combine, the yield monitor went up an average of 70 bushels on corn, uh, $7 corn at the time. Um, I paid for that calcium that season. Exactly. <clears throat> Wish I'd done it all. See, and that's that's what every farmer has to figure out, in my opinion. Just because Steve did it doesn't mean you can do it. But because Steve did it, that means you can do it, if it is that necessary. If you need calcium, the soil will tell you. The plant will tell you. Can you utilize the base saturation test for recommendations? That's a guideline for us. When you get to a field, we really don't know where you're at. Um, so we look at that to, to get a starting point. Okay. Like this gentleman up here gave, can I have one of those that we looked at? Yeah. <clears throat> the one you rolled on? Something? Yeah, that'd be fine. We, he says, well, how much calcium do you guys think I need? And I said, well, <clears throat> we're going to make an educated guess here. And, and one thing that's interesting about this gentleman, <laughs> he said to me that he, Got two different guys to sample for him, and they sent it to different laboratories. Yes. But when he got the results back, they were completely different. And he's over there losing sleep over it. And I'm telling him, don't worry about that. Because that is just what Ferry told you from last year's corn college. Extraction methods vary from laboratory to laboratory. So it's strictly a guess on their part. The key thing that we look at on the soil test is over here on the base saturation. In other words, we like to see that up about 80%. Now, may I say what yours yeah, is? Boy. Is that okay? His is 50%, and I think it needs to be closer to 80 So I told him whatever his pocketbook could stand, he needs to find a field that just bugs him. You know, something that doesn't drain right, when you work it, it's gooey, uh, it doesn't plant right. Get out in that field and, and put on what you can afford. If that's two ton, fine, get on two ton. But take a portion of that field and do nothing like you've been doing, and then double up the two and then double that. So you got two, four, and eight ton. In a strip, whatever you can afford. And then you mark that 
And no market was something that the state's going to mow over with their lawnmower or whatever. Something that you know what it is, and you keep that, and now you watch it. And then you decide if there's that need. Just like Steve, when he hit that strip in there, the monitor told him, he made a mistake. Okay. So you have to do that same approach. Now, if it's 80% and his says 76, that may be close enough that it won't show anything. However, it's still a chemical test. Yep. So you still need to do some tinkering with it. Don't let the soil test be inhibitive to you. Just because it's there doesn't mean it's always correct. It's a guideline only, just like, like Ferry said. The other thing that Ferry says that I agree with 100% is your soil is a system. See, we're so focused on chemistry. You need fertilizer. Now you implement dealers are so focused on physical properties. You gotta till it right. You gotta use a particular tillage tool. Perry says you need that. But the third one might be the most critical, guys, and that's the biological in your soil. Your grandfather took care of it by being in rotation and having animal manure all the time. Society says you can't do that. So you gotta do the next best thing. Try to get some calcium in there and try to cut back on that fertility because if you get too much salt in there by trying to raise a crop with excessive fertilizer, you can be inhibitive to that plant too. It can be toxic. We see that in the region I go to next week in Minnesota where they get too much OO60 on and it's got a little sodium in it. That sodium and that potassium start making salt barriers in there. You get a bone dry season, that root can't go anywhere. Not because it's too dense, because it's too salty. Hard to believe. It's high priced and they're selling you too much of it. Get the calcium on, you'll find out exactly how much you need. Thank you. Is there any more questions? I've exceeded my 30 minutes. Any more questions it. for Jim? <laughs> We'll be around for a while. We'll discuss anything you want to discuss. If you don't use extractive chemistry to establish the, uh, uh, yeah, how do you do it? I believe that the water soluble test isn't isn't as good either. It's better than the extractive chemistry. Okay. The best test I still think is do a strip. Yeah. Whatever you want to implement. So you're using water soluble. We, we aren't quite water soluble. It's really low grade soluble sodium um, acetate, but it's very, very weak extracting solution. But even my soil test has got its errors to it. The best test you've got is get them strips in. Let that soil talk. Does the process mill, mill the samples before they do the... We try not to grind them with an automatic grinder what we do is we try to get you to send it in reasonably dry and then we just use our hands to try to break it up. Mm -hmm. That way any of those coarse calcium particles in there, we don't crush them like you would with an automatic grinder. See, and that's what all the soil testing laboratories right. do. Why? Because, hey, if you're not doing that, you're not right up to snuff. See, we think it causes a serious problem in the analysis itself. Okay. Anything else for Jim? Thanks, Jason. Appreciate yeah. it.